All right, everyone, welcome back. So we continue our 2023-2024 season previews with the St. Louis Blues today. Um, just for just for a little disclaimer, it's the last day I'm going to have the long hair getting a cut tomorrow. But regardless, uh, the St. Louis Blues are an interesting team. They were missing the playoffs last year, and now this year it's kind of a question whether or not they'll make it. So regardless, let's get into last season before we start looking at the offseason and previewing next season. Uh, in 22-23, they went 37-38-7 and for 81 points. They went 23rd in the NHL, uh, and they missed the playoffs. Um, and that was a year where, at the beginning of the season, St. Louis was very streaky. Uh, they, like, lost, like, four, they won their first four games. Then they lost, like, seven. Then they won, like, 11. Then they lost seven. Then they won seven. And it, it was really weird at the beginning of the season. They were a very streaky team uh, before they kind of just tampered off into the trade deadline. And then they were solid after the deadline. That's why they were higher in the standings than they probably would have been if the season just ended at the deadline. Uh, but regardless, they still missed the playoffs. Uh, and I liked, I actually like the direction they're going. I like their prospect pool. I like the, you know, the moves that um, Armstrong's made and uh, Craig Berube as well. I like a lot of the moves and a lot of the things that St. Louis is doing. And I like their off season too. They didn't do a whole lot, but they didn't need to do a whole lot either. Uh, your departures are as follows. Thomas Grice, Tyler Pitlick, Josh Levo and Logan Brown. So Thomas Grice there, of course, um, I think he retired, I believe. Um, unless I'm thinking about Bernier, but I think I think they both retired. Um, but yeah, Thomas Grice, great goalie, uh, was okay in St. Louis. Wasn't the best backup in the world, but he was still nonetheless uh, a solid backup, I would say. Uh, Tyler Pitlick, solid bottom six forward. Same with Josh Levo and, and Logan Brown. Uh, all those three players were more or less just deaf bottom six players. Uh, no more than that. So no really big losses there. Uh, and they brought in some other guys, too, to help out. Uh, their key arrivals are Kevin Hayes, Mackenzie McEachern, and Oscar Sundquist. Uh, not bad ads there. Um, Kevin Hayes from my Flyers, a good uh, third-line center there for sure. Uh, McEachern um, and Sundquist, honestly, are good um, deaf players in the organization. Uh, could make – could – Probably makes the main roster. Some of them do. Uh, but regardless, not that big of moves there. And they really didn't need to do much either. They have a lot of guys who are younger and are going to take time to develop in the AHL, the NCAA, uh, out in Europe, wherever. And they've, I think, and when I made my prospect pool overview, I said this, they developed themselves a pretty decent prospect pool. It's not like one of the greatest in the world, but you still got some pretty solid guys there in your pool um, that have some decent potential. But for now... They got to ride with the young guys they got and just hopefully ride out some of these contracts that they have left on the roster. So your lineup is as follows. Uh, Pavel Buchnevich, Robert Thomas, and Jordan Cairo as your first line. Uh, Brandon Saad, Luke Shen, and Kasperi Kapanen as your second line. Now these are via the Hockey News, the projected lineup, so don't blame these on me. I didn't make these lines. Uh, regardless, they're not a bad first line. Buchnevich, Thomas, and Cairo makes a lot of sense. Uh, Brandon Saad kind of getting up there in age. Uh, definitely getting a little bit old. Uh, still has a few more years, but still a ways away. Uh, Luke Sh or Luke Shen, Braden Shen, um, definitely a guy who was actually a former Flyer um, and is starting to you know regress a little bit. He had a bad year this past season, not scoring a lot of goals as he used to. But regardless, I think this coming year he could do better. Uh, but yeah, I like that. I like that top six overall. Uh, you could swap Captain and Sammy Blay. I wouldn't disagree with you with that. Of course, I didn't make these lines. Uh, these won't be the lines come the start of the season, of course. Uh, third line, Jacob Verana, Kevin Hayes, and Sammy Blay. Uh, fourth line, uh, Jake Neighbors, Sean Walker, or Nathan Walker, sorry, and Alex Taropchenko. Uh, so not bad there. A lot of young guys down there besides, of course, Kevin Hayes, Verana. Um, definitely in the second half of the year when he got traded to St. Louis uh, from Detroit, played very well in St. Louis. Hopefully he can bring that energy into this coming season. I thought he looked good. Uh, Sammy Blay, the same thing, came over after facing a lot of injuries with the Rangers. Uh, now he's played well with St. Louis. Uh, Kevin Hayes, look, he gets paid a lot, but he is retained. So he had a he had a meh year in Philadelphia. I'm hoping on that third line he will play well. Uh, with the Blues, and for someone who one of my favorite players for the longest time was Kevin Hayes, uh, I'm definitely going to be rooting for him in St. Louis. Uh, and then, of course, you got guys like Neighbors, Walker, and Tropchenko, younger players uh, who will look to establish themselves for sure. 
Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if these extra guys, uh, um, Mackenzie McEachern, Nikita Alexandrov, and Oscar Sundquist do get spots in the lineup above some of those guys. But I would expect players like Neighbors and Taropchenko to probably play a full season in the NHL, for being honest. But yeah, overall, not a bad forward core. Still developing, but not a bad forward core whatsoever. Uh, your defense is where it gets, is where it gets eh, a little bit meh. Uh, your defense, Nick Letty and Colton Pareko is your first pairing. Tori Krug and Justin Falk is your second pairing. Uh, Marco Scandella and Tyler Bertuzzo as your, or Robert Bertuzzo, sorry, as your um, third pairing. And then you got uh, extra guys like Tyler Tucker, Calais Rose, and then Scott Perunovic as well um, on that blue line. Perunovic, we talked in our prospect pool overview video. Shocked he's still a prospect, but he is. Um, hopefully this coming year, uh, he can at least get some games with St. Louis and not be out for six months. It was unfortunate, um, but I think he's healthy right now. So hopefully he will play. Uh, with St. Louis this coming season. Apart from that, the blue line isn't terrible. Uh, we do need a better season out of Tory Krug, though. Um, he has scored at a 40-point pace um, for some points there last season, but really, he needs a better year out of him for sure because I remember at the beginning of that season, they were terrible. Uh, they were absolutely awful. Like, Kairou had a very... Kairou started off awful. When Ryan O'Reilly was on this team, he started off awful. Uh, Krug was terrible defensively. Uh, it was just not a good year overall for St. Louis in that first half. It got better towards the end, but it was not good at the start. Um, and that's the biggest thing with St. Louis. You want to start off better. You you definitely want to start off better. Uh, your goalies, you got Bennington and Hofer um, as your pairing. Then you got Vadim Zarenko as your um, third string goalie. Uh, Joel Hofer there going to get a shot at being the backup most likely. Uh, definitely a guy that I look at and I'm pretty hyped up for, for sure. Uh, and I hope that he uh, does well uh, in the games he's played because he's done well down below in the minors. Uh, could be one of the more underrated goalie prospects in the NHL, for sure. Uh, the biggest X factor, and I just kind of talked about it, is the start of the season. It's not even anything with the team. It's really the start of the season. If they want to get back to the playoffs, if they want to return to the playoffs with this roster, uh, they're going to need to have a good start to the year and not be a really streaky team like they were last time. They need to start off well. Um, because especially since, you know, the West is getting more and more competitive, I think. I think a lot of teams are developing a lot better. Uh, Arizona is going to get better. Chicago is going to get better. Nashville and Winnipeg are in those questionable spots where they probably will be still decent, still competitive. Uh, and then you got the Pacific. The only bad team in the Pacific, I would say, is San Jose. Anaheim, though they will be bad, they probably will be competitive. Um, Seattle, you got other guys there too that you're battling for with a wild card spot. And then, of course, you got the top three Minnesota, Dallas, and Colorado are the main teams you're probably going to be fighting for there uh, to get a top three spot in that division or even a wild card spot. So, overall, uh, the Blues are in a strange spot there, but it definitely need to have a good start to the season. Uh, the biggest question is. Um, honestly, I wanted to put it for X factor, but how will the goaltending do? How is Bennington going to do this season? Is he going to be a baby? Is he going to, you know, lose his temper? I, I shouldn't use baby. That's a bad term. Is he going to lose his temper? Is he going to act stupid or is he going to keep his calm head and play a solid season? Because especially that too, if Hofer plays well off the bat, he could take that starting job. That, that is, I, I feel like that is very possible. Uh, if Hofer starts off very well, or Bennington starts off badly, Hofer could very well take that starting job. And I've seen it before with Edmonton. We're talking about it with other teams too. Um, that could very well happen. So honestly, uh, St. Louis there is an interesting team uh, goalie-wise. Uh, your point projections are as follows. Uh, you have Jordan Cairo leading the way with 81 points per the Hockey News' fantasy guy, by the way. Uh, you got Pavel Buchnevich with 73 points. Robert Thomas with 69 points. Uh, Braden Shen with 67 points and Kevin Hayes with 50 points. So obviously there, uh, Kyra leading the way seems about right. And the rest of those seem good too. Uh, sleeper or your bust is Tory Krug. Uh, don't overvalue Tory Krug who scored at a 40 point pace and quarterback the power play. He's missed 69 games over the past five seasons and saw his ice time cut back due to inconsistently and poor defensive play. He's trending down and he is getting up there in age. He is getting old. Uh, to the point where the decline may be starting. Uh, but hopefully you need to have a better season out of him. At least a little bit better of a season if the Blues want to contend. But yeah, St. Louis, I still like the spot they're in. They're relatively young. 
Uh, they're relatively solid. They got guys coming over in the pool like Dvorsky, Snuggerud, Stenberg, Bull Duke, uh, Zach Dean, other guys there that could make a shot. Um, they have some good guys in that prospect pool for sure. And I'm definitely hyped for the future and what is to come for the St. Louis Blues because I think better. I think people are underrating them. Anyways, let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and that subscribe button down below. I really appreciate it. Uh, the next one we're doing is the Tampa Bay Lightning. So uh, that will be tomorrow. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.